How's it going everybody? That was a super sobering, informative, and surprisingly funny and entertaining conversation with Dr. Otto Yang. So we're doing a few new things and we haven't done this in a really long time. We haven't done one of these open fireside chats where you can actually jump in the room with us and have a conversation with myself, Joan and Ricky, and I think Mark is also gonna be in the room. So how do you get on this show? How do you get on the show? We're gonna drop the link in the comments right now so you guys are going to jump on this webinar with us and we're gonna have a conversation while we're live streaming and it's going to be open topic i know that a lot of you guys are concerned about your financial future about what your freelance life is going to be like maybe some of you guys are in school and this is like a really weird time because you've already paid your tuition theoretically and school has been canceled what are you going to do how do you stay relevant? How are you going to continue your education even though the school may or may not be responding to what's going on? I'm here to help. I'm here to try to help, actually. So let's see what happens. So what? do you guys drop the link in there already? Um, yep. Pasting it. So yeah. I need to There's share already, that as uh, well. David Daly, Daniel Duncan, they're already in the chat. They're already in chat? So, so what we're going to do is this. How do you get live on the screen with me right now? All you have to do is ask a really good question. I'm gonna ask you in advance to limit the context of the question. Just ask the question and based on the question alone, Jonah and Ricky will promote you and you'll join us as a panelist and we'll have a conversation. And those of you guys, look, just ask a really good question and you'll get promoted. Uh, Jonah, can you turn my headset down a little bit? Um, yeah. I'm, also, I'm a little loud for my own head here. Okay, so let's see who's in. So we have eight participants already. Yep, so just tell them to ask the question in so Zoom. So ask the question, you guys. In Zoom. Oh, I see your attendees here. Okay. I will say hi to Anastasia, Daniel, David, um, Kathar, Lucy. Now I have no audio in my ear hole. Oh, okay. What let happened there? When, let me know when it sounds good. I'm lowering Yeah, oh, I was, uh, yeah, okay. Just lower it a little bit and we'll be fine. Okay, we're good there. Mario, what's up, you guys? Is that Mario Quesada? I don't know. We don't know. Mario, that's you. Just say something so I know it's you. I'm open up the chat here. Mario, t he says he can't hear Chris on Zoom. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, indeed. He says he can hear Ricky, but Chris is cutting out of Zoom. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And they're also saying the voice is intermittent. And guys, we're trying some new technology here, so let's see what happens. We'll get this right eventually, I think. Hopefully. All uh, right. Let me try something here. Only Chris is cutting out. Thank you, Mario. What about now? What about now? Am I coming in loud and clear? Now is good. Okay, whatever you did there, Jonah, yeah. make a note of that. So, so now we're good. Chris, just uh, yeah, just keep just talk about what do you want to talk about? Right what now? I want to talk there? about? Well, there's so many things to talk about. First of all, I sound hoarse because I'm sick. Hopefully, it's hashtag not coronavirus, you guys. I've done three podcast interviews this morning already, and we did one live stream with Dr. Yang. So I'm just doing my best to keep my act together to show up 100% every single day to give you what I can. And this is a fireside chat. So fireside chats, there's no agenda. Just come in with a question and we want to bring you on the virtual couch with us around the virtual fire. And that's what we're about. Okay. So I think Ricky, you're telling everybody to drop their questions in the Q and A tab. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So if you look on, oh, geez. Whoa. <laughs> if you look on the screen here, there's a Q and A tab <laughs> yeah. and you can ask your question there. And if it's good, then we'll promote you to Panelists. panelists and we can see your video Jonah move that around just move it around the screen so we get that delayed 80s effect move it around more like in a circle big circle right. so it. you can see the <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> Woo. this is the whole stream right the yeah, hall of mirrors guys anybody tripping on anything right now I wish maybe okay okay first time using this app welcome Calvin from Hawaii Hawaii. Okay. Uh, we know Mario. If that's the same Mario, Mario Quesada. Oh, Henry Kaminsky's in the room. You wanna? All, all my pro people are jumping into the room now. So go ahead. Let's. Oh, Sean. Okay. Uh, let's bring my friend Henry on. 
So I'm going to allow okay. him to talk, right? I'll just hit that button. I'll do, okay, there you go. I can do it. Henry, I believe you're on. You can unmute yourself. You can also turn on your camera if you'd like. I know you have a pretty sweet camera setup oh, now. So, yeah. But you don't have to. Henry, can you hear us? Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> I should have asked Henry if he wants to be on. Besides just putting him just on the spot blast. like that. Okay, oh, putting you on blast. There you go. There you go. On. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Full Mr. Screen. International wears glasses? I can't hear you, Henry. Uh-oh. I can't hear you. What's going on? He might be muted. No, I unmuted him. He's unmuted for sure. You're looking good, man. Got a different look. Uh, what is this, like open top uh, <laughs> Wednesdays? <laughs> Take off one more button. Pin him. Open one more button there. Okay. We still can't hear you, Henry. You got to check your audio settings. Check your mic settings, dude. Can't hear you at all. I can barely hear him. Let me see. You can barely hear him? Yeah. Man, I could barely hear you. Yeah. So I guess it's on our end then, right, Jonah? Potentially, yep. Yeah, potentially. Okay, hang tight, Henry. We'll figure this out. Maybe you can recite uh, the Gettysburg Address for us while we figure out whether or not we can hear you or not. Chris, how do you uh, suggest students keep engaged when they're learning through a screen? This is really difficult. Very good question, Ricky. I find it difficult to watch some content that are like tutorials because my brain wants to switch off. Every 18 minutes, my brain wants to switch off. So I think you have to bring a lot of energy and I think the onus is on the presenter, not you. So we know we're competing against your desire to go to sleep and turn off your brain to preserve calories. We know that about you. So that's why you'll see me when I'm doing my live stream, I'm going to explode with some energy to kind of keep you engaged. And I might say, hey, you, what's going on with you? That's why we, we make little jokes here and there, because that little bit of entertainment we try to sprinkle throughout the show keeps you engaged and keeps you alert. If you keep talking like a truck and just keep just driving through, you're going to lose your audience. So I don't think that's your fault if you're falling asleep. I think that's the problem of the presenter. Uh, build a model. Uh, um, you know, when you watch a really good cliffhanger movie where there's lots of tension, you're not going to fall asleep because you want to know what happens next. So if you build a model where there are definite concrete phases where something's going to happen, well, somebody's going to want to know what happens next. I'll give you an example. A while back, Mr. Beast did his video about trying to fill up a swimming pool in the entire backyard with these little, I don't know what they are, these little beads that expand with water. And he kept doing this over and over. I'm like, is this going to happen? Because it doesn't look like he has enough. Despite him saying that he had like a million or three million or whatever beads, I kept staying attached to this to see what happens. There's another technique that you can use if you're an educator and if you're trying to keep people, um, keep people's attention. You'll notice these things that are posted everywhere on Twitter, on CNN, on Facebook, where they say like, you won't believe how this child star turned out. And it's like a very clickbaity thumbnail looking like, whoa, how did she turn out? Or how did that child actor turn out? Whatever it was. And then you click through and then they show you a story about every child actor and what they're doing now to keep you clicking and flipping through the slides. And it's because I'm waiting to hear the answer to the original question. I know it's a little manipulative. I know it can be sometimes frustrating, but they're working on triggers that are hardwired into us as humans. Like we want to know what happens next. So tell a story, keep us on the edge of the seats, and then eventually tell us the conclusion of the story. What do you do as the learner? Because this is all for like, yeah, my teacher, but my teacher's really boring, Chris, so I can't really teach my teacher how to teach in a convincing way now. Okay, so you're saying that that's the variable, like your teacher's really boring. My suggestion would be to drop the class <laughs> and then drop the school. If that's the case because they don't have very high standards of teachers now we also have to say that sometimes some certain subjects are very tough to teach but we've also seen a lot of innovation in terms of how people teach i'll give you another example mark roper i believe he's the former nasa guy jpl guy and he he takes like weird interesting subjects and he ties science to it one of the things that he did was he talked about like carnival games and the best carnival games where you have the highest probability to win. And he did it very mathematically. I know there's some subjectivity involved and the sample size is very small, but he would play every single game and see how many tries it took to win the prize. And based on that, he would make recommendations. I love that. That's about statistics. It's about um, probability. 
And I like that. That was a really fun way to engage with that content. Why am I just seeing the blue screen now? Rick's messing with something. Rick is messing with something. All right. But well, that's not what the audience is seeing. Oh, they're not seeing that. Okay. Uh, so I hate to say this, but like if you pay somebody to teach you, their responsibility is to teach you. I, I don't know how else to say this. I really don't. And if the teacher is really boring and not engaging with you, not creating or presenting information in a way that you're, you're compelled to watch, what else can you do? Okay. Drink lots of coffee, get caffeinated, five hour energy, uh, slap yourself in the face. I don't know. Uh, make sure the temperature's cold and not too hot because that'll put you to sleep, I think. I think too hot or too cold actually will put you to sleep. Okay, Chris, hold on one sec. All right. We're still having problems. Testing, testing. I'm hanging tight. Uh, there's 23 participants in this room right now. Hopefully, we'll figure out these audio issues right now. Could it just be Henry or is it? No, Joan is trying to do it right now through himself, and we can't hear him either. Oh, so. uh, okay. So remember how I told you guys to test this before we went live? Yeah, it worked fine. <laughs> it did not work fine. Yeah, it did. How could it work fine? Can you hear me now? Oh, there he is. Very, no, I could barely hear him. Very low. Very low. Very low. Okay. So we just got to figure out. Joan, can we turn this computer up? Oh. Yes, you can. There we go. There we go. Test, test. Yes. Oh, go. yay. Okay. Take a moment there. <laughs> All right. You guys. Uh, hold on one second. All right. Hold on, Henry, with your glasses. Did you wear contacts normally, Henry? Yeah. Oh, I see. There's like a whole other side. Clark Kent. <laughs> Don't know who you are, man. <laughs> Henry, what's your question? I didn't have a question. <laughs> 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 well, it's just good to see you. Actually, it's good to bring you on because you're patient and you you kind of know the drill. And I know you're a generous guy, so we wasted three or four minutes of your life and you can't get it back. I apologize. So, Henry, no, no worries. Did you tune into any of the content with Dr. Yang at all? I'm just curious. Yeah, for about 10, 15 minutes in the in the way beginning, and it it, it did not sound too promising. I, I caught. Yeah. I caught a part where it, it, it sounded pretty horrible. <laughs> it is so, pretty horrible. Uh, it is. No, it is. Let's, uh, let's well, be realistic. Okay. Let me ask you this question, Henry. There's a lot of concern in the creative community. I guess if you have a job or a business, you have legitimate questions about how this epidemic or pandemic is going to impact your business and your way of life, whether you're here yeah. or somewhere else in the world, because we're all really, really connected these days. Henry, I'm curious. Yeah. Are you feeling any of this yet? Negative. That's we good. had one. We had one client uh, cancel his membership, his coaching membership today, um, due to his industry going and locking down. He's he's a dentist. Okay. So he said, you know, I, I need to conserve some cash. Uh, I'm going to put a halt on 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 the sales stuff, which I think, in my opinion, would be the the wrong thing to do i mean if now's the time that dentists need him more than anything because he teaches and coaches dentists because he is i say and so i was like now's the time they need you more than ever and but i said I, I i completely understand you know we you know we could pick this up later on but i'm the, other than feeling other than that i'm not really feeling much of it um okay. we have two big brand accelerator clients that uh, pulled the trigger on execution. So we have a, a work, work that's going to bring us through the next three months, which is just a blessing. And, and, and I'm super grateful for that. So that's, that, that is again, just a gift, Chris, but I know that this is not the case for most. And, um, I'm, what I'm doing in my community and, and, and the message that I'm sending to my team and to my audience and to my clients is, our audience and clients need us more than ever. And it's our responsibility and our duty as an entrepreneur to step up and provide and serve. And I took an oath, you know, when I started this business that I would do whatever it takes to make this happen. Mm. And, you know, I've, I've been through the, uh, I've been through the 2008 crash and I've been through fine Chris, you know, because we do coaching together privately. Yeah, I've gone through uh, I've gone through financial crisis when things were great <laughs> because I made stupid decisions 
And I was able to weather through that and take this business to where it is today. So for whatever reason, I'm blessed with the gift of calm during these times. And I want to pass that along to my community, my audience, because I mean, the stock market today was horrible and people are just like, you, you got to see the threads, you know, on some of these community forums that I go on. It, it, everybody is just in panic and, and we need more calm. We yeah. need more connection. We need more positivity. We need more. I'm not saying, you know, everything's going to be all right, guys. I'm not saying that. But <clears throat> I think we the, the thought leaders need to step up and the real leaders need to step up and say, listen, let's all lock hands and get through this together. Chris, what how can I serve you? Yeah. OK, that's a good segue for me to bring Mario on. Thank you, Henry. Yeah. Uh, Got it. Take care. Have a good night, guys. Take care, Henry. Mario, you're up. And Hold on. Just Chris, give, give us a second. Yeah, Chris, why don't you talk for a minute? Um, yeah, I'll talk for a minute. So Mario's like asking this question, how can we stay positive and motivated when we're facing an uncertain future? We got Henry's version of it, which is he's, for whatever reason, he's not phased by a whole lot, which is really good. He's very resilient in trying times like this, and he wants to remain calm, and he's trying to spread that message for people not to act in irrational ways. Okay, totally hear that. But... Maybe that's the exception. I, I think there are a lot of people who are rightfully concerned about how they're going to make rent, how they're going to keep the heat on, how they're going to buy groceries or diapers for their kids. This is a very real thing. People who don't have much of a war chest, a lot of money saved up, and they don't have much of a social network to fall back on, uh, the kind that takes care of you in times like this. So let's talk about it. Is that enough of me talking or no? We're waiting for Mario to unmute himself and video himself. Okay, Mario, I'm going to hit unmute. Oh, he won't let me unmute. All right, Mario's showing off his power there. Okay, I can read some other questions and then answer them too. Okay, so uh, we, we already did this. Nobody's asking questions in the Q&A panel, Chris? No, they are. I see them. Oh. There's eight open. Right, can you help me to manage these? I believe, uh, yeah, I can. I believe you can move them. Uh, um, if it's done, we just dismiss it. Chris, you seem pretty positive. How do you keep such a positive mindset during these trying times? What makes you think I'm positive? You don't seem to be panicking at all. Well, let me ask you this question. Um, what is a panic mindset? And how does a panic mindset affect your decision-making ability? What do you think? Um, how does it, will you say that again? Like when you're panicked, do you make good decisions or do you make poor decisions? Oh, I'm in survival mode. Yeah, but I understand that you're in survival mode. But say, for example, you're driving along the road and your car flips over for whatever reason. You hit a ditch and you fall out of it and like, ooh, where are we? You're in the desert. And you and your partner, one person starts like, oh my God, we got to get out of here. Let's go, let's go. And you're like, wait, 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 let's just assess what's going on. Like, what kind of supplies do you have? How far away from town are we? Do you have technologies that we can use just to kind of assess and survey, like, the situation? Mm. You see what I'm saying? So, like, when you're in a panic state of mind, you're not making rational decisions. You're making very emotional and impulsive decisions, which sometimes can work for you. But, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not much of a gambler in that sense. I don't want to bet on sometimes. I just want to stay calm. And that's why a lot of times when my kids and I, we go on adventures with my wife, they tend to gravitate towards me when they feel scared and uncertain of what's going to going to happen because I present to them a calm, stable voice in what's going on. Whether I'm right or wrong doesn't really matter, but I just want to look at things, right? I want to look at things objectively. All right, but, I believe Mario's ready. Yeah, Mario, you. we see you. Yes. I think we hear you. How's it going, man? Good to see you. Good to see you guys. What time is it it's there? It is, we're three hours behind you, so it's almost oh, it's, one o'clock. Okay, all right. So Mario, you just heard Henry go on about being calm and positive, and I think yeah. it made perfect sense to pull you in because of your very question about how to stay positive. How, how's your mood, how's your vibe, and what do you see in the community that you interact with? <clears throat> um, the, my kind of MO is always to try to seek to be calm regardless. Yeah. So um, when things go down, I'm trying to look for um, 
look for stability in the situation, look for ways to keep people around me calm. I think I started, I started this like little hashtag um, catalyst of calm. And I think we need to like just be that for other people. And the, the funny thing is the more we are um, focused on helping other people be calm, the more we bring calm to the situation. Mm, and I ourselves. like that. I like that. Okay. Um, do you have any other advice? I mean, you, I think you were on, were you on the pro call this morning, Mario? Um, I wasn't, it was like five o'clock. So yeah, it's really, very to... early for you. <laughs> okay. So there's some genuine, genuine concern. I know of a couple of people yeah. who, cl who clients have canceled or everybody's put their project on hold. So they, they can see yeah. definitely the financial runway closing down on them really fast in times like that. Yeah. You need to remain calm, but what are real practical things that you can do? What do you think? I think right now the, the practical things that we can do is to, yes, there, are, there may be things like I've had a couple, couple clients cancel projects and it's just their, their futures are uncertain right now. So one thing is to remain available for your clients because um, they still need help. Um, and if they see you as a willing participant and, or a partner in this time, um, who are they going to go to when when things get better, right? So um, one thing is just to kind of remain available to help as much as you can. I'm not telling you to give people work for free, but you know, offer your services and 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 give them give them um, appropriate like help where they need it. And then another thing is um, look use this time to like dig into um, education, learning. Uh, building up yourself, work on yourself as much as you can right now, because this time is, there's this really precious time. I think it was, I, I commented on somebody's, I don't know if it was Twitter or whatever this morning, but um, they said that, um, that this time is kind of a gift. We're, we're almost going to given, we're given this extra time back. And a lot of us are like freaking out because there's not, there's no work or whatever, but um, we're given this time where um, we don't have to do as many things. So maybe we can take that time and, continue to build up our self, uh, knowledge, our, our skill sets, everything else. Um, so those are kind of two things that I would, I would say remain available for people to kind of help problem solve for them. We're designers, right? So problem solve for help people problem solve. And then the other thing is work on yourself, work on your abilities, work on your skill sets. Yeah. You know, I think Wesley said this, Wesley and little said this when she was on our show that sometimes in in moments of crisis, we want to kind of just bottle up whatever it is we're feeling and move on and take action immediately. And she says, sometimes you'll find that you do a lot of needless things mm -hmm. and you're a busybody and you're not actually addressing what's going on. So I want to just remind everybody, we are definitely in uncertain times right now. The market's in free fall. Uh, countries are full on lockdown. I've never seen anything like this, nor have I ever read about anything like this. The closest thing I can think of are these horror disaster movies like World War Z and uh, Outbreak or uh, what is the video game on Resident Evil? It's like, this is not good right now, you guys. It's not good. So I think there's a rush to take action right away. And if you could do that, that's great if you've been able to process how you're feeling. But I think it's important, <clears throat> excuse me, uh -oh. Just to take a moment <laughs> Yikes. to kind of feel what you're feeling and to, to, to be in yeah. this uncomfortable space. And if you're afraid and you're concerned, just think about that a little bit and just feel it. Mm. Uh, I think this morning's call uh, with Mo uh, as the moderator, facilitator, uh, he and I were talking and there's a lot of anxious energy. And so I asked him, like, you know what, let's process it this way. And I like to sometimes, uh, to help gain clarity, think of things in very binary ways. Like if you took a piece of paper and you, you folded it in half and the left column is uh, all, all that's going on in the world, the news that you're hearing, uh, the feelings that you have, and just write it down all in the left-hand column, okay? And if you guys are listening to this, just take a moment and do that. And then in the second column, write down the things that you can do, actions that you can take. And you realize that the left column is going to be pretty long and the right column might be a little thin depending on who you are. But worrying about the things that you have no control over and action that you, there's nothing that you can do. Like for example, if there's a shortage on face masks and you feel like that's really an important component of keeping you and your family safe and you can't manufacture more face masks, focus on the things that you can do. Limit your exposure. Uh, keep 
keep us, you know, they call it social distancing. Uh, order in a little bit more. Just bunker down in, in the home fort for a little while. And, and what, uh, Mario, what you said, which I thought was really good, is you have all this time now. If a client goes away, maybe that's stress you didn't need just for this moment in time. Maybe that's an opportunity for you to read a book, watch a video, take a course, practice a skill that you've been meaning to do, um, work out a little bit more at home. Those are things you can do. Or even uh, read your kid a book, whatever it is. You, you have more time now. The pressure of working uh, has been removed from you because you can't work as much as you used to uh, because of what's going on. So maybe if you have more thoughtful action, um, that might help you. Any other thoughts on that, Mario? I think it's really important, kind of going back to a little bit to um, what Wesley was saying, um, to really acknowledge how you're feeling mm -hmm. and to, yeah. to be okay to be okay with that. I mean, it, this is a scary time, right? And and like you were saying, Chris, like th this is unprecedented what's happening in the world right now. Um, and and so like acknowledge it and know that your that your fear is 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 okay and it's real and and but you know there doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you fall victim to it. It just means that you acknowledge it. Yeah. Um, Bob Bob's really good at like saying you know push into that fear, acknowledge it, welcome it in like a friend and then use that fear to move on, you know, acknowledge it and, and help it, help it to kind of like move on with you and, and continue on. Um, there's always things that, that we can do to, to better ourselves or um, somebody in the, in the questions was asking about like how to, how to keep people calm around you. I think if you can be calm, that brings people calm. So you have to first work on, keeping yourself calm and your calmer, your calmer presence will bring people into a calmer state. Um, and, and so the more, the more you practice breathing and just kind of like keeping calm and, and, and knowing that, Hey, what are the, what are the options that I have right now? You know, social distancing and, and um, remaining away from crowds and, 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 you know, being able to work on uh, special projects or work on yourself. I think Blair ends, text or tweeted this morning that he noticed that every time there's a social, there's a, there's a big disaster that his physical fitness gets better because there's more time to work out. Right. Right. Um, and the more you work out, the more endorphins you release, the calmer you are. Um, so that's another way to really kind of like bring, bring yourself down a little bit. Yeah. And I know you've been around a few sets in your life that on <laughs> when you're crew and you're feeling the crunch and the pressure of hitting the schedule, the last thing you want to do is run around in panic because that sends signals across the room to the actors, the director, everybody on set that something is wrong. So never rush. Take, uh, you know, take a calm, steady pace and just get your work done to the best of your ability. At least this way, you don't send that signal to everybody else like something is wrong. And so if you want to calm people down, be the example, right? Be calm yeah, first. Be lead by example yeah exactly yeah okay all right very good so i'm going to bring yoana on so yoana has some questions thank you mario thanks for tuning in with us and how do i bring yoana it's going to take a you do it okay bring yoana on yoana has a couple of different questions so um i'm gonna let her ask it but she's she's got an opinion about how some businesses are using COVID as a front to sell their services and it sounds very sleazy to her and it's inauthentic and will affect the way we all try and offer our services so we want to talk about that so you wanna there we go i see you you yeah, wanna just hold on okay chris i have questions for you if you want to in, be in between just let me know yeah go ahead fire a question um what are some things i can do freelancer right now other than um bettering myself and taking a course to to make to let it be known that i'm you know what i have a better question okay <laughs> I didn't like that question. What were some things you did to bake in uh, some saving practices so that it wasn't famine right now? So you weren't uh, really struggling during these times when no clients were calling you. Are we talking about in the past or like literally like right now? I'll do the past. Cause the past because we don't work with clients right now. Exactly. So what were some things you were doing to make sure that you were seeing to make that runway longer? Okay. So I've been very fiscally prudent in most of my life, financially conservative, right? So I would make money. And 
I, I, I didn't do what most people do is they outspend their income by just living on credit. So you see stories of famous people like Wesley Snipes. There's others who filed for bankruptcy because they overspent. They bought a big house. Um, MC Hammer, one of the, the most successful, uh, can you, we call him rap or is it hip hop or I don't know, but performer performer in his day wound up being bankrupt and he talks about it and he says, you know, I had a really big entourage. I was supporting all these people and spending money and had more friends uh, in, in that time than I, I thought I had. And he just spent money like crazy. And this is how you go right back to being poor again. So I think the general thing is we need to have better financial IQ. Uh, it's like the rich get rich because they have a certain mindset, at least the self-made ones, right? And the poor, for whatever reason, stay poor because they also have a different operating system. Uh, we know somebody like that, right, Ricky? Where before you even get the money, you're like spending it. Yeah, that's no good. No, right? Don't want to do that. Right, because here's here's the theory that I have is that what, whatever con conditions you grow up in, that feels like normal to you. That makes sense. So if you live in a noisy neighborhood and you go out to the country, it feels really weird. Like you want noise. So you want to turn on the, the washing machine or the dishwasher. You, you need that noise to feel comfortable again. Mm -hmm. Versus just understanding that the new peace and quiet can be your new normal. Mm -hmm. So when you grow up without not a lot of money, as soon as you make money, what do you do? You want to hit reset. You want to bring it back to what you're used to growing up. That's very true. Right? So you, you grow up in, I'm not saying you specifically, but <laughs> no, a person. No, it's definitely, but it's definitely a real thing that you, <laughs> it's try real thing. To, you try to get back to that normal state where you're, you're most comfortable. And for some people, that's chaos. Right. And so if you, if you grow up with not a lot of money and then you start to make money, what do you do? You just spend all your money. It's crazy. You spend the money and then you have nothing. It's like, oh, this feels normal again. The idea that you have money is burning a hole in your pocket, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we have to have a different relationship with money to say like, you know what? If I'm really smart, I'm going to save some, I'm going to spend some, and I'm going to think about how to invest my money so that my money works for me. So early on, as we made money, the first thing I did was pay down all my debt. Credit card debt first because the interest rate is so high. Next thing was student loans, which I paid off, I think within a year and a half of graduating. And I was very fortunate that my mother-in-law gave my wife and I the down payment to our house. So that was the next thing I wanted to get off my back. So I was just like, want to knock out each piece of debt as fast as I can. Mm. And I think I got that from my dad. He's like, don't live in debt. Mm. Okay, don't outlive or outspend your means. And so you build up a little nest egg. And if you're smart, you start to invest it. This is how a lot of rich people get richer because they just use their money to make money. It sounds like a crazy concept, but you don't actually have to do anything because there are other people who don't have money who are willing to pay you money to temporarily borrow your money. This comes in, forms, in the form of stock, bonds, mutual funds, just straight up loans. And that's what happens. So I was able to save up enough money so that my runway got longer and longer and longer. And a lot of it was because I didn't want my wife to worry. I felt that it was my responsibility to be the breadwinner for our family. And I don't want her to worry. And not having enough money makes people worried. So I just live within my means, save money, and, and invest it well. Nothing too risky. All right. Okay, so she's... Um, she's you want ready? us on? Yep. You want to... Hi, welcome to the show. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Hi. I feel like I'm looking down Hi. on you. Um. I'm sorry, like my, I can only put my camera at some point of view. I, okay. don't, I don't have it. It's okay. It's fine. I feel I'm like uh, I'm on top of you right now. Okay, so go ahead. Okay, it's fine. So Chris, uh, I think there's a bit of assumption here. I'm, I've, we've been doing all of that, like uh, the priorities, you know, stocking on a bit of medicine for our health issues, um, buying the food we need and paying out the mortgages. Yes. And? And <laughs> I can't see my question anymore. Like <laughs> well, my, you could feel it, right? My, you know your question. My question was um, if it feels like you have no option and uh, people are canceling on you, how, how do you try and make money <laughs> okay so during a time like this budgets are tightening up people are going to be a lot more conservative they, they don't want to make any big risks right now 
those are things that you cannot control, right? Yes, and also, by the way, we have no uh, nest egg because we've had a very rough half of a year. Okay, so you don't have much of a nest egg. So can we, we sit down and think about three to seven things that you can do that you can control, action that you can take that might improve your situation? I have really been thinking about this like for the past three days at yes. least. So one of the things I want to do do is reach out to my clients and just see how they're doing i love that so there's no selling in that perfect i'm i'm empty about that uh see how can i how we can keep our mental health in check yes maybe create a routine where we take care of the like your body needs a workout as well as your mind mm -hmm and uh, get really creative with content <laughs> i like that i mean those are great i mean to see you have it in you i like what you've wrote already so you can reach out to existing clients just to make sure that they're okay and be of service to them not to try to sell them anything and i think during these times they're going to really appreciate that and they're going to remember you so we have to kind of think about what we're going to do now and what's going to happen after we get out of this thing and i think that's great that's a sign of a person who really cares about other people. And then you need to take good care of yourself. Maybe there's that diet or that exercise program you've been meaning to get on. Now's a great time to start that. And I think there's content that you could be making. So here's, here's what I think. I think in most of us, like we have this, this path and we move down this path every single day. It becomes part of our habit routine, kind of our destiny and it's kind of on rails and it just keeps moving forward. It's in moments like this where your journey just suddenly comes to a halt. Uh, a force greater than you that's outside of yourself acts upon you to ask you to make a change in your life. Right? That's what's happening right now. So this, this pandemic, the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, is disrupting everybody's way of life. If not yet, it will soon disrupt everybody's way of life because we're all interconnected. Okay, so this is a change agent, a force acting upon us. And so if you look at this like a story, I just wanted you to step back and look at your life like a story. The heroine in this case is you, Joanna, right? And something has happened. There's a call to action. Uh, the, the emperor needs help to, to save the kingdom. So do you cower? Do you crumble? Or do you sum up the courage and say, you know, uh, you kiss your loved ones goodbye, you... you you, you take your stick with you and you march forward. Uh, this is your moment and the, the change is here. So a lot of us have been sitting very patiently waiting for a moment to happen to, to create content for social media, to post their first video on YouTube or to call up the five clients, their dream clients to work with. They've been waiting for a sign. So here's your sign. So now's the time. And I w I'm going to tell you a little personal story right now. And you, some of you guys that know me really well know that my home office is filled with books. Like I could probably stack them from floor to ceiling and there's so many books. And I have to reorganize my books. And I'm looking at the book. I'm like, oh, the title. This is all my, I want to learn this thing and I want to learn this. And instead of feeling overwhelmed, which I normally feel because I have so many things to do, being locked home just like trying to stay inside and limit my exposure not to contaminate other people nor bring something back home I was just like suddenly like really happy like I'm gonna get to learn these things and I'm gonna commit to reading these books that I've bought because I know that once I read the book I can use the knowledge to help so many more people so I've got so much motivation and now I have something additional I have time so yesterday we had a management meeting we talked about all the different kinds of content that we can create to help people during this time, to, to mix it up, that this was our calling too. Hence, why we're doing this impromptu live fireside chat, because I haven't talked to so many of you in a really long time. So we want to get back to our roots, to open up the communication, to try to foster a sense of community and conversation once again. So that's what I'm doing. So you wanna, what I would suggest that you do is keep writing things on your list. I think you're off to a great start. Do, write a few things that scare you a little bit and keep writing more things that scare you and really look at that list and say, these are things I've waited a while to do. Now's a really good time to get started. Okay. 
Do you wanna you wanna yes, ask? Chris, I, I'll I'll do just that. Okay. Uh, it's I also heard something else like staying lean and nimble and um, yes, we're all we're already kind of maxed out. So you're as lean as you can get, right? Yeah, it sounds. <laughs> That's why I didn't say it. <laughs> I didn't say stay but lean. There's, there's also something that Mo said that stuck with me, like yeah. what you do now will really impact the future. Yes. Um, because uh, you're going to get a return on investment, not in terms of money necessarily, but by the way you position yourself. Yeah. I like that. So these are seeds that you're planting today that you'll harvest tomorrow. So, so plant some good seeds and it'll bear fruit. All right. So I want to try to get more people on the show here. So you want to thank you very much. And so I want to say something I, I'm reading in here in the Q&A. And if you guys are joining us on the YouTube live stream, if you want to jump in the room and have a conversation with us, feel free. The link's going to be dropped in a second and you guys can join us. We'll probably do more of these things if you guys like this kind of format and want to have a conversation. Uh, Sam is saying, hey, FYI, I'm mainly active on LinkedIn, already helping people, free knowledge. He's saying thanks. So I don't, that's not a question, but I just wanted to read that. <laughs> Can you guys, you guys want to promote a couple other people, bring them into the room? Uh, who would you like to bring in? I don't know. Whoever, you know, because I'm trying to yeah, do the, have the conversation with people. What we're, what we're trying to do here is if somebody asks a good question, we'll bring them on. So we're just waiting for that good question. Okay. In the meantime, though, I can keep asking you questions. Yeah, that's fine. And where are you getting your questions from? You know, just around. Around. All right. Go ahead. Ask me a question then. Go for it, bud. <laughs> Mr. Question. Uh, <laughs> Questionologist, go ahead. Um, hold on one second. Question master. Stealing from the <laughs> chat. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Taking credit for other an, people's an hard work. This person asked, what should you... Oh, Chris, you can tell this story. Okay. Um, what are your views on students working during college? Because... I, we already answered this question, though. I believe you're, you're not a, exactly a fan of working while you're in college. Yeah. Okay. So let me address the reality of it is a lot of times some of uh, many of us are working in college just to, to kind of soften the rough edges because we didn't get enough money, don't have enough loans or just, just there's never enough money to survive during college unless you come from a well-off family or you were the recipient to a, a crazy grant or scholarship, right? So the natural instinct is go to work to, to buy a little bit more groceries or whatever it is that you want to do. The problem is when you work in school, in most cases, it's not doing something that you're learning, uh, meaning you're doing some menial task. You're, you're stocking uh, the shelves of a bookstore. You're a clerk at the cafe. These are not things that you're studying in school. This is not what you want to get better at. So, and because of that, because you basically are unskilled labor, you're not going to command a very high hourly wage. And most jobs are hourly, and they're going to pay you something, but not very much. So you're gonna do this and then you have to kind of sit there and think, okay, so if I worked 10, 15 hours a week, I'm getting paid whatever the minimum wage is. Let's say it's 10 bucks, I'm getting paid 150 bucks. So 15 hours times 10 is $150, right? And then you have to sit there and think, what am I paying the school to teach me at this point? And if you do the math and you divide your tuition by the number of units or credits that you're taking, you might find that it's actually quite a bit per unit. So what you're doing is you're using arbitrage in the reverse. You're paying somebody more to learn something and then you don't apply yourself and then you go and sell your time for a lot less. I honestly think this and I'm, I'm trying um, to be grounded and real and to be sensitive about this issue because I know a lot of people do have to work when they're in school. You really have to kind of sit there and think, is this really helping me? And the answer is going to be very individual. Now, if you work at the library and you can spend a lot of time reading books and helping people find resources, and part of your job is to read, that sounds like a pretty good thing to do. If you work in the computer lab and you're troubleshooting a lot of computer issues and you're fascinated by computers and that's going to help you in the career path that you're going down, I also think that might be a pretty good thing to do. And other than that, I just don't know that there are that many things that you can do in college that are going to pay you enough money to offset what it costs you not to learn. So if you have six hours that are free or 15 hours in our example, I would rather have you sleep. And I'm just saying that no judgment there because you need rest so that your mind and your body can be fresh and strong to learn so you don't fall asleep during class. 
And if you're if you got enough sleep, I would recommend that you read or you practice your skill or you go to a conference or an event and meet new people or that you intern for one of your professors or you become their TA so you get more exposure to the content that's helping you. I think those might be good applications of your time and your energy. Good re recycled question there, Ricky. <laughs> good recycled one. Well, I'm reaching out to people here, but um, nobody's responded that they want to come on live. Okay, well, we can just read their question for them. Okay, so what are some things um, you can do to be more moldable, more moldable and maybe more appealing to a company in this trying time? Okay, um, that's a good question. I'm thinking right now that there are not going to be a lot of sane companies hiring people right now. There's only going to be a few. I put out on Twitter the businesses that I think are going to do well right now. And there are only a handful of industries, okay? I think I saw a post on Amazon saying they're hiring 100,000 new employees to help with the surge in demand. And they're going to pay them even more to deal with what's going on. So e-tailers who've got their business game together are going to do really well. I think people in the delivery space, because now we want to limit our contact with the outside world, so people who do deliveries are going to do well, and, and, and people in those industries should do well. Uh, people who make tools and applications to help distance-based learning and communication um, and, and remote work possible, uh, companies like Dropbox, even Spotify, because we're probably going to listen to more music while we're working, a Zoom video conferencing. We're using a version of Zoom for this webinar right now. So that's going to be in play. Uh, project management software. Notion is one of our favorites here. We use Trello. We used to use Basecamp. So those things seem to be good. Uh, communication channels like Slack and whatever else that's out there. Discord. Streaming services should do well. Internet service providers should do well. So those are the kind of, and food service and, and people who manufacture staples, things that we need to use, like toilet paper, water, uh, just the essentials, right? Those industries should do well. Everything else is going to suck for a while, you guys. Chris, let's, I have, no, let's be honest. I, I think that's good. Okay. Um, do you think that lowering your prices during this time is a wise move? I saw that question. He doesn't have a vi uh, camera, so he can't. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I, I saw the question. It's good. It's okay. Not everybody needs to come on. I just wanted to make sure we're as interactive as possible. Mm -hmm. hmm. I think we have to remain flexible. Usually, I'm not a fan of discounting, but to be flexible, to be a true partner to your clients and to serve them, you may have to change some of your terms. You could make um, uh, monthly installments, like to break down the payments. Usually I tell people to do 50, 25, 25, 50% up front, 25% after completing major milestones and 25% upon delivery. You might need to do 50, 10, 10, 10, and 20 or whatever the math is, right? Three tens and a 20. You could break it up, make it more palatable. You could extend the payment terms. You could say, if you're willing to to uh, prepay another project, I'm willing to give you a discount because I know we're all going through tough times right now. And I, I love working with you. And when this returns, we want to be ready. Um, you, you, you may get creative in this space. And I, I wouldn't offer up discounting for first time clients right off the bat. Um, but if a client is really kind of genuinely concerned about their future, just take a moment to ask them about that, to feel their pain with them a little bit and, and get creative. So in this time, it's like all the rules in the rule book get thrown out, do what you need to do to survive, but try not to come across as being desperate or needy because that'll actually send them running. That's good. Do you have, um, what's like your opinion on uh, promoting a lot right now in this time mm. and trying to just be <clears throat> helpful and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so if you promote your services, when nobody's buying, you're just wasting your money. Um, you want to have this other question about the sleaziness of people tying into COVID-19. And and there's a fine line here. And I, I'm not the arbiter of who gets to decide what's sleazy and exploitive versus what's genuine. So let's talk about a couple of things. Here's, here's, here are some companies that I think are responding to this. And I'm okay with this because it sounds like it's benefiting their community and the people they serve. Adobe is saying, basically, if you log into your account and you hit this button, they're going to suspend billing you for two months. So they're going to give you two months of Creative Cloud for free. And I think that's a wonderful gesture by Adobe that's going to help out a lot of people uh, because during these two months, you might not be doing a whole lot of creative work. 
let's be honest. But I think that's also an initial uh, gesture of goodwill that if the pandemic extends, they may change their terms. Who knows? I like that they're taking action. Okay. Uh, Zoom's uh, CEO and founder, I believe, said that he's going to give his software, Zoom video conferencing, free for K through 12, I think. So basically, for educational use, he's going to make video conferencing available for free. And this is going to help a lot of schools and smaller programs out there to be able to continue to serve their students um, via video conferencing. So we're seeing things like this happen. Um, I was just on a podcast earlier today with a company called Everyday, um, and Everyday provides uh, SAT training for uh, high school students and lower, and they basically waived all their fees. It's free for now. What a great way to express that you know you want to be sensitive to what's going on. Now. You could say that, well, it's easy for some of these companies to give away stuff where it doesn't have a giant financial impact. They're, they're giving away digital things and, and there's not like a real expense on that. I get it. And if you are a service provider and if you make a physical good, you can't really just give stuff away because then now it's going to cost you a lot of money. Well, this is where you get really creative and we're going to see more expressions of this and I think it's totally fine. I, I, I think... Uh, I haven't seen anything that sounded horribly exploitive because people also know that if they don't do this right, they're going to get called out on it. Okay. Dave Coe Dave Co has a question. David uh, Coe. Yeah. Yeah. Having run a motion studio, what sorts of new opportunities do you see in the motion design industry right now? Man. Yeah. That's a tough question. David Coe. Just... Pull, uh, pulling the train to a halt there, grinding halt. Okay. What opportunities in motion? I think it's really challenging to work in the motion industry if you're not working in-house uh, as part of an agency uh, or you have a large tech firm that you work with directly. Because uh, I think motion, in, in my opinion, often gets tied to advertisements or music videos and neither industry is doing really well. Uh, I see motion being used in the way that brands are communicating um, redesigns or rebrands. And I think there's opportunity for you there that if you work with these large branding firms like uh, We Are Collins, uh, they do some amazing uh, design and branding that a lot of times the way that they present their logo work or their identity design work is through the use of motion graphics. I know Michael Beirut does this a lot in his presentations. So there's opportunity there. I would reach out to a lot of the branding firms, small and big, and just provide, uh, just let them know you exist. And it would be good then if you showed a bunch of logo animations to, to help them see that, oh, you know, I have this lock in my head and you actually happen to have the key. The key I'm looking for is you and you're the key to my success. And so that might be a good thing for you to do. I'm going to drink some water. I'm losing my voice. You can cut to me. I'm <clears throat> totally fine being on camera now. Um, completely joking. The next question is from Adam, and he asks, when you see an opportunity from somebody on your team to step in and help out, should you or should you just stay in your lane and do your work? That's a really good thing. That was a uh, good question there. Should you help out your teammate even though that's not your responsibility? Mm -hmm. There's a very easy way to answer this question. Because sometimes we need help and sometimes we can offer help. In the times in which you need help and you see your teammates kind of totally unaware and just indifferent to your struggle, how does that make you feel? If they're out there in the park doing a barbecue and playing frisbee or whatever they're doing while you're like oh, sweating trying to make a deadline, it doesn't exactly foster a team and family spirit, right? So here's what I would suggest. I think... Oftentimes, when you offer to help people, they never take it. But you get to collect the goodwill points. You made the gesture. Sometimes they say, okay, help me. And you help them. And the thing that glues our society together is this law of reciprocity where people want to reciprocate at some point. We want to clear the debt. If you've helped them, they're going to want to help you at some point. And you don't have to do it for that. You can just do it because it feels good and it's right. You know, when other people smile and you see their spirits lifted up, it's it just feels good. And that can be its own reward and its own payment. So I would say that 
you should always be looking for things to do to not just sit there and fly under the radar and try to do as little as possible. That's not a good sign of leadership. It's not a good sign of someone who takes initiative. And if you ever want to move up in the world, take initiative. I'm always marvel. Uh, I always marvel at people who st who start out in very low positions in large corporations, and they wind up becoming the CEO one day. What trait did they have? Why them of all the thousands of employees did that person get promoted to that position? I'm thinking that it's about initiative, and acting with intention, and acting with courage, and looking for problems to solve. So it's probably something like that. Good. Um, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for saying it was good. Of course. So there's a person with her hand up here. Oh. Did you see that? I did not. Oh, yeah. She. Uh, Who, who's got their hand up? She was saying how it was a bit of a personal story. I don't know. Oh, okay. Don't well, know. should she share? Is it a good personal story or no? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. She's asking to go live. Give me okay. one second. So, Chris, right. just take over first. Just Mariana. Welcome to the show. We're going to get you on here and you can go live. Oh, now all of a sudden other hands are going up. Okay. Oh, now you guys know how it works. Okay. This is good. I'm going to use this moment to check in on YouTube to see. We don't want to ignore our audience on YouTube to see if anybody has any questions because I'd love to help you if I can. So let me go on YouTube right now. So as soon as Mariana is ready, you guys let me know. Okay. I can hear her audio. Okay. She is. Uh... Oh, my bad. Hold on one second. Uh, Jonah, you put coronavirus on a fireside chat. Oh, I that's what we were going to talk about. It's just a normal fireside chat. I don't want to talk about coronavirus anymore. I thought this was a fireside chat of what you spoke to. No, 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 no. <laughs> totally unrelated. We're just going to have a conversation. <laughs> that's clear now. Well, I mean, it is It is talking about the current affairs. So. No, but we're not. Yeah, but it's not. I'm not dis uh, disseminating any coronavirus information here. So we want to be clear. That is true. Yeah. All right. So Mariana is ready, I think. Wait, maybe Sorry. Not. No, it's fine. She looks like she's getting I don't want to down on Chris. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hi, what's your name? Mariana. Mariana, Hi, welcome to the show. Hi. I was in the workshop when you came in Miami. Oh, okay. Um, Great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what I want to say is that... Um, a few about a month ago, I was um, I was diagnosed with lupus, um, and I had a really bad flare of uh, symptoms. So I had to quit my previous job, which was screen printing, just a lot of work. Uh, so now, every time, literally, I go to the hospital, the doctor, they say, "What are you doing here? You should be home. You're high risk." Um, and obviously, now um, I. I haven't been working in any design work. I I graduated two years ago from graphic design, and I done a few. I work with a nonprofit to get like some marketing experience and stuff, but I only had like a few clients. So, um, my question is, I feel like everything is kind of telling me I should just try to work as freelance or work from home, find something that I can do from home. So, for example, you have someone once in a video who does brush for create brushes for a living. Um, so maybe like, what do you think for someone like this who maybe their only way, at least for now, if they want to keep working on design and perfecting it or, or working towards that, that has to stay home or just has like a disability, like what are some options or what do you think? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So first of all, thanks for coming to my workshop in Miami. I thought you were going to say yes, and I want a refund. I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry to hear that you're diagnosed with lupus. Like I, I know people who have this and it's, it's tough. It's dehabilitating, you know, it's a rough one and it, it will alter your life. It will change things. Right. So you mentioned that you used to work at a silk screening place and there's a lot of labor involved in that. I used to work in a silk screening shop yeah. too. So I definitely feel that. So that's probably not the best environment for you, even yeah. without the coronavirus going around. So now life has acted upon you too in, in multiple ways. Your health is deteriorating. You have to deal with your new reality. And then on top of that, we got this whole coronavirus. So now you're working from home. What can you do? I like this this as a prompt. Like I look at it like whether you're religious or not, some some opportunities knocking on the door, some some power is telling you this is your moment. 
I want to look at it like that, okay? And I think since you used to work in the silkscreen business, I think there are really cool things that come out of that that could be textures or half tones or brushes or assets that you can create, knowing that you used to work in that space that you can generate that can possibly build some passive income for you. Uh, our friend Dustin Lee, who who has the retro supply company, he exists basically by making things that other people can use over and over again. So brushes, definitely. Uh, like I said, any kind of texture, half tone pack, or anything that you can make using your your passion and the things that you know a lot about, uh, seemed like a pretty good business decision to me. Yeah, I've been really lost for a while. Like I didn't know where to go. Like. And every time I go to apply somewhere, they always want a different program. Um, and uh, I have somebody who uh, is a publicist. He works for like uh, something called Doc Hotels. And he wanted me to help him with a branding of a certain company and in social media. So social media is something I've been looking towards a lot. And I, maybe that will be a good way to start. Uh, like the, I love the carousels. I want to, there's not a lot of people using carousels right now. And I feel like that's like the future. So maybe go towards that. And also he said there's money on making stickers, uh, the stickers for Instagram stories. And he said he used them a lot for his uh, dog hotel. So maybe that's something I could do too. Yeah. So you know what I'm hearing right now? And I, and I, I don't know if I'm, I'm reading this correctly, but I'm hearing that you have uh, like a lot of things that you're thinking about and sometimes yeah. all those things can be overwhelming okay and one person says this and one person says that and then you're like well what do i do i i want yeah. you to take a moment to take a, just a deep breath and you're like you know what i kind of have to figure out what i want in my life because otherwise you're going to do what uh, uh wesley and little said is you're going to do a lot of busy work and find that you've gone nowhere that you've just used a lot of your energy and you're just whipping yourself into a frenzy yeah. okay the I first like I just was I was gonna say that's the biggest thing with me is that I haven't been able to find my niche. I feel like I do I, I try to photography, then I do illustration, then I do uh, feel like I have to know web design. So I I don't know how to find my niche or what should I do to perfection something and yeah. just go into something. Well, that's let me guess. Okay, finding your niche. Okay, um, I I. A lot of people don't know kind of the food that they like, so they'll go to a buffet and they'll try lots of things. Well, that's one way to do it. And you can have a lot of food on your plate and things that you're not going to like and that you didn't eat. And yeah, that's that's the way a lot of people approach it. But I, I want to be more intentional in my life, and I would recommend that you just sit down and ask yourself some questions. Like, if money were not a problem and unlimited for me, what would I be doing with my life right now? What gives me fulfillment and joy? If you don't have any good answers to that, I want you to travel back in time in your mind to go back when you're like five or seven years old, the things that you love to do, the things that make your heart skip a beat. And See, that's, I, the, that's the thing because I, so I grew up with a mom who's an artist. So I was uh, put into everything. I done uh, modeling, clay, pastel, watercolor. I did everything and everything I was pretty good at, but I never really practiced really well one of those areas so i've done i do, i love everything and then so i just that's why i just i haven't found like the one thing or well that's yeah <laughs> sorry i'm mumbling it's okay uh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna ask you just because you, you've done it to me twice now i'm just gonna ask that you just hold your thought please so i can finish mine is that okay because yeah. every time you you start i don't remember what i was gonna say and i thought maybe i would get somewhere good so I can just tell, like, I don't know if it's just your personality or what's going on and the fear that you have, but it's like you're bouncing all over the place. I can I can feel that energy. It's like very frenetic right now, right? And I see you laughing. It's like, yep. So you trying lots of things, that's fine. I just need you to, like, take a moment. Like I said, take a deep breath. Try to sort this out in your mind. Revisit those things that gave you pleasure. And it's okay to try lots of things. You're supposed to try lots of things when you're young, especially. But now's the time for you to audit those experiences and think deeply, man, that was really cool. I don't know why I walked away from that. And I would be really happy if I just did more of that. Versus somebody saying, hey, you can make a lot of money making stickers. 
Now, I know I'm generalizing a lot of things here, but I'm usually very cautious or apprehensive of those kinds of ideas. Well, I heard on the internet you could do a lot with this because it's not coming from inside. It's another voice outside telling you to do something. You're going to go down mm -hmm. that thing and you may be successful. You may not be, but you're going to find that it's going to leave you feeling really empty. So I'm going to move on. So I'm going to say to you, just take a moment to think, to reflect. Use the next 24, 48 hours just to really crawl into the cave of your mind and excavate and dig up and surface the things that you think you're going to really enjoy and like doing. Start there. Okay? okay. And then choose a lane. You don't have to stay in that lane forever, but choose one lane and go deep on that and see what it gets you, okay? We're going to drop a new episode tomorrow about uh, specialists versus generalists. Yeah, I would yeah. strongly encourage you to tune in and watch that because I do break it down uh, as an argument yeah. to like, what should you do, okay? All right, thanks Thank for, you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Okay, Chris, um, I have a question that it seems to be uh, pretty popular in the chat. Okay, and which so, chat? On the YouTubes or on the Zoom? On the uh, Zoom, which is what I'm looking at right now. Okay. So a lot of people are thinking about changing their business right now, changing all the models, doing switching to something else than what they were doing previous. Um, wise, unwise, like what do you think about changing a lot of their business models, a lot of what they were doing previous to meet this economic situation right now? Yeah. So there's this thing called consistency. And we're often governed uh, in our thinking and our actions with being consistent with what we've done in the past. Now, many of you have sat around and said, oh, you know, if I wasn't so busy, I would, I would do like an amazing Airbnb or vacation home by owner or something like that. Or there's this project I've been meaning to do for a really long time. Well, guess what? All those things are gone right now in terms of the demands on your time and your attention. So... If you're just hitting the bottom right now where you just got laid off and you don't have a nest egg, I don't know what it is that you can do to control your future. Hopefully there will be a stimulus package that helps to take care of the, those most in need right now to give you a little bit of money to help you through the rough times that we're going to be heading into. But outside of that, just think about the thing that you want to do. And new business opportunities happen in times of calamity and disaster like this, 100%. Okay, so like I said at the beginning of this uh, fireside chat, there are a lot of industries that are going to do well. There's a bunch that are going to be suffering. Think about how you can tap into that. There's an opportunity here for those that are willing to act. I know a lot of people are scrambling right now to find a way to do their meetings and conferences online. Well, Maybe that's an opportunity for you to help them. Uh, maybe you're in video production and you can help them set up cameras and live streaming equipment. Instead of shooting videos for others, you can help them uh, to design a system so you can become some kind of video consultant. You can, you can be a consultant in the lighting space and say, look, we'll make you look really good. Or we'll help you integrate new technologies, whiteboards and, and touch surfaces so that your thing is really dynamic and interesting. There's opportunity. You just have to look. And those that can get more creative and are willing to, to gamble a little bit are going to be the big winners coming out of this. So most definitely, you don't owe yourself anything in terms of following the, the plan that was written by the old you. That's why they're like, they say this, that every day is as, as uh, 24 hours that are new for you to do with whatever in your life. Don't let what happened yesterday dictate this. Cool. Um, okay. I have a, I have another one here All right. ready for you. Uh, I see a lot of people are on YouTube right now, Chris. I want to help out and share my opinions and thoughts and offer, but YouTube is so oversaturated right now. There's, there's no way I can cut through the noise. Is that true? There's no way to cut through the noise that YouTube is oversaturated. Yeah, everybody's on YouTube right now, Chris. Well, you're not. <laughs> no, this isn't me. <laughs> no, I know the person who's saying that. Oh, I see. I'm saying it right back to them. They're not. And let's take a poll right now. Everybody in YouTube right now that's on in the chat, because there's a lot of there's a lot more of you on there, just so that our sample size is bigger. Just type in yes if you have uh, if you have a YouTube channel that you're actively working on and creating content. Let's see how many people say yes. And I think there are about 260 people in the live chat right now on YouTube. Go ahead and type in yes, and we're going to see how few yeses there are. 
what is actively um what is active it's a priority in your life and your business right now to make content so some of you some people are writing no so go ahead everybody else that says no go ahead and type that in we're going to see how overwhelming that is so when we say everybody who is everybody and it's oversaturated well compared to what so here's what happens with saturation is that the cream rises to the top. So when there were seven YouTube creators, all seven were great because there were only seven people making it. Now there's seven billion or however many, it's not that many, but say a billion people creating content on YouTube. There's still six billion people on the planet. You could say that uh, there are a lot of actors and actresses in Hollywood. Yeah, the cream rises to the top. Do something different. Do something what Seth Godin calls or says, do something remarkable, worth remarking about you have a lot of material that you can reverse engineer. That oversaturated market, just look at those videos and say to yourself, how can I do it better than this person? Can I combine what this person does with what this person does and bring them together in a super creative way? And then create a whole market for yourself. You could say that even when we started in 2016, that it was already oversaturated because all the OG YouTubers already kind of are killing it. And it was really hard. But what if we just said, meh, it's, it's too late for us. I'm old. Uh, the, the, the moment has passed. I don't think so. I think Matt Diavella, is that, or Diavello? Diavella. D Diavella? Yep. Yeah, he just recently came onto YouTube, right? He's not that old of a YouTuber, and he's crushing it. He's got, what, 2 million followers? Yeah, like 2 million subs, and he's been at it for like a year and a half. A year and a half, you guys. So I think when we say things are oversaturated, it's too late, uh, it's, everybody's doing it, uh, those are excuses. They really are. They're lies that you tell yourself not to do something. You could say there are too many graphic designers, too many logo designers. Well, why, why get into logo design? There are too many websites. Don't get into that business. There are too many books. Why write another book? <laughs> That's good. Too many blogs. Why write another blog? So I don't, I don't know. I think those are just excuses, you guys. So let's not do that. And I didn't see an overwhelming stream of yeses coming raining on my head here. Yeah, there are more no's than yeses for sure. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's a handful of people who responded relative to the people who are tuning in. So I'm going to assume the, the silent majority. It's an emphatic no. They haven't created content. So if you decide to create content on any platform, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and you don't get results... Don't come to the conclusion. Don't tell yourself the story that it's over. Tell yourself a different story. Tell yourself the story that maybe I need to do something more innovative so that my content can stand out. Maybe I need to work on my presentation, or my personality, or the way I edit the, the, the content. You know, we, we've mentioned his name before, Zimri Mayfield. If you watch some of his content at the beginning of his YouTube career, he wasn't getting a lot of views. Then he got really wild and wacky. And I have a hypothesis on what, why this or how this came to be. When he started to act like what people were calling him like stoned or on some drug, he started getting a lot of views. He became a personality and he worked on this. So he discovered that this is what the audience wants. Now, Zimri's a good guy, I think. I don't know him. But I don't think he's the best logo designer. He even tells you his logos are kind of crappy. But he brings so much personality that people tune in for that. Now, my feeling is, because when I was trying to um, do uh, an impression of Zimri, my son looked at me, he's like, Dad, are you doing PewDiePie? And I'm like, oh my God, I think Zimri was doing PewDiePie with the little voices and the weird expressions. And so he just looked at the biggest YouTuber and said, what is he doing? How did that happen for him? And so he became this person. He changed he morphed himself into something that people would tune into. So that's really the thing that you have to ask yourself. Like, don't make more crappy pieces of content. It's not going to go anywhere. Not a good use of your energy. Sit down, study, take a course, read a book on this stuff, practice, get coaching, and then make content and then stick at it for a little while. Stay out of the results. And you, you might be surprised at the, the person you become in the pursuit of this goal. And that you may never ever get a big following on YouTube but you become a much more confident professional speaker. And that's a pretty good outcome, I think. I, I like that stay out of the results. That kind of mm. leads me into my next question. Um, how do you tell if you're specialized enough? 
Is there a certain number of clients? Is there a certain number of money earned, free time? Is there a certain metric here to, to kind of gauge whether or not you're too broad or if you're specific enough? There, uh, as, as a lot of people would say, there are riches and niches, and you got to go and go narrow, narrow, narrow. And I've been reading a couple of books from Seth Godin, and he talks about this, and he's so um, eloquent and powerful in the way he delivers this message, okay? He says that what we need to do is we need to find a community that wants to pay attention. Think about that for a second. We need to find a community of people that wants to pay attention. <clears throat> you can find a community that's very indifferent about the clothes that they wear, the car they drive, or the food that they eat. Well, there's no point in going after those people. They just want to buy whatever's cheapest or whatever's most convenient. In my recent podcast with Steph Hammer, like he was talking about mental and physical availability. That that's really what's driving people. I don't believe in that at all. Like just whatever's most convenient or what's somebody's yelled at you the most, that's what you go and do. No, I really believe in in Marty's kind of broader understanding of what branding is, that people buy things to define their identities. They're searching for meaning. Okay? So you're looking for those people right now. And those people have shared worldviews. And they like to talk to each other. And they like to tell other people what they're doing because they're influential in getting other people to do things, the people who don't care. So if you market to a very broad group of people who don't care, you're wasting your time and your money and your energy. So find a group that's very passionate about something and make something that matters to them. And the example is like there are a lot of people who care about hot sauce for whatever reason because there are stores that only sell hot sauce. They're, I don't know of any store that sells mustard or ketchup, you know, where that's all they sell. Because you know why? Because people think mustard's mustard and ketchup's ketchup and it's fine. But for whatever reason, people get fanatical about hot sauce or microbreweries, you know. There's, there's people who really care about this stuff. So make something for them. In order to do that, you have to go really narrow. And what's really cool is it's the opposite of what you think. When you go really narrow, you make a greater impact, you grow much faster, and you build an affinity and a loyal following for what it is that you do. You think chasing a broader, bigger market that doesn't care about what it is that you do is going to lead to fame, fortune, and whatever else. It's not. It's the opposite. Like, we exist as a channel, I think, as a pretty niche uh, focus on a pretty niche audience. We focus mostly on creative people trying to make money to build a business. So that's what we do. And if you ask people, who else is doing this? Well, let me ask you right now, who else is doing this? Who is helping creative people learn the language of business so that they can price their work, value it accordingly, to learn how to negotiate, to do sales, to, to build, basically the business fundamentals, the things that are going to keep you in business. Who's doing that? Let me know. For creative people. I'll give YouTube a chance to answer. People are tuning in on this. Like, who, who is it? Jonah, Ricky, do you know? We do not. But we have someone commenting, uh, Jonathan Stark. Okay. Jonathan Stark really focuses on what community? Do you know? We are not aware of his work. Yeah. Developers. That would make sense. I'm not a developer. There you go. You see? And he's been in our channel. He's, he <laughs> creates great content. Uh, we really like him, but uh, Dave Coe was saying Michael Janda. Okay. Michael Janda is also another person trying to help creative people. I, I think Michael Janda is excellent. Um, that Charlie, uh, girl? Charlie Prangley? Yeah, she's great. She is, but she's not really teaching business. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, see, so people know. It's like, you see, we have 276 intelligent people right now, and what are the answers? There's a handful of people. See, so we went narrow, and by going narrow, you become known, and you build an audience, a community, you build expertise, and they get to know who you are. If we wanted just to speak very broadly about things, it's a very tough road to, to, to follow. Joel Pilger is also an excellent person. He does a lot of high-end coaching, consulting, and management. Um, 
so Dave Coe, thanks for mentioning Joel. Joel's also um, a friend of the channel. He'll be coming on to talk about uh, how how to prepare for the economic downturn and, and some business ideas. So I'm looking forward to having that conversation. And he he has a podcast as well. But So there we go. Okay, good day, Frank. It's like I do. <laughs> he nominates himself. Okay. I'm getting this sign that we need to wrap up pretty soon here. I, I guess we're all pretty tired. Uh, let's go back to the the Zoom room. Is there anybody else that wants to come on our show that has a really good question? I still see some hands up between Charles, Nick, and Ash. Is that Ash from the pro group? I think so. Rathod? How do you pronounce his last name? I don't know. I don't know if that's him, but why don't we allow him to talk and bring him on the show? Okay. Let's do it. Hold on one second. All right. Boom. I just allowed him to talk. It is him. Ash, what's up, man? Hello. Hey. Okay, give us a second so that they can frame you up and get you ready. All right? So you're going to be our last person on Zoom to talk to us, and we'll get going. So while we're doing that, um, Ricky, is there another question coming from YouTube or Zoom that we can answer? Um, no. So Alrighty. Ash is here, though, so we will just get a pin his video, and then we'll go from there. So Ash, when you're ready. You're live, my sir. Uh, unmute him. Oh. Okay, go. Ash, you're live. You're ready to go. He's hi guys. Okay, How you doing? Hey. Um, yeah. So the the question was, um, I've, I've 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 been through the 2008 crash. Me too. Um, and I I started. Um, I'm 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 not I'm not a designer. I'm I'm self taught. Um. And I started off doing everything. I was a generalist. <clears throat> and um, over the years, I've started specializing just recently. Um, and it served me well. But I remember the 2008 crash, I was doing everything. And I'm just thinking now, should I be doing everything I know? Or um, should I c carry on doing um what i've learned um in terms of specializing what does your instinct tell you, know, you say it again chris ash what does your instinct tell you my instinct tells me to i mean i'm i'm worried at the moment i'm worried at the moment in terms of um you know, business is slowing down. Um, people are unsure at, the t at, the, at this time. And I'm, I'm thinking I can probably do a lot more than what I have been doing. Um, yes, it's, it's, it's a good question that what, what my instinct tells me because I'm, I'm, th this, is, this is why I'm asking the question because I am, I'm a little bit torn I'm just thinking if I switch now, is that, does that, is that going to be a little bit desperate and is that going to affect me in the long term? Okay, so in the past when the economic meltdown happened in 2008 and the, the, the hole opened up in the earth and swallowed the financial market, uh, what did you do to get out of that market? I learned as much as I can. I, I learned as much as um, I can. I, I I had a positive mindset. I thought, um, right, I, I had a nine to five at that time. Um, and before that, actually, I was thinking, I need to work for myself. I don't work, want to work for anyone else. Um, but I was never, I, I never acted upon it. And then I lost my job. Um, my daughter was born. Um, I was forced into a corner. And I thought, I have to do something now. So I learned as much as I can. And um, I learned off YouTube. I learned um, so many things. And I just, I was kind of, I suppose, a little bit naive as well um, in the, 
which was, I think, was a positive thing. Well, um, well, let me ask you this was, question. Let me reframe the question because you're, you're giving me a lot of answers, but not the one I'm looking for. So let me reframe the question. In that time, once you got through it, what did you learn? Did you, would, did you decide to specialize or generalize? And that's what got you through it. Um, at the time, initially, I, uh, I, I generalized and then I found, found my niche. And so what did you decide to do? Stay a specialist or to remain a generalist? What did, what did you decide? Um, it's not I, a trick question. I guess, no, 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 well, no. I'm, I'm just thinking about, because it was a long time ago, um, I, I guess I did specialize at the time, yeah. Would you attribute the specialization to be a part of your success that you're experiencing in the last 12 years? Or, or do you attribute it to like something that's prevented you from growing? Um, no, I would. Yeah, I, I, at, at the time. So the, this is the thing. So I, I did, um, I, I specialized at the, at the time. Um, and then I suppose I changed um, what I did, but that was that was a little bit after um, that period, the two thousand eight period. So I see the yeah. hesitancy in your answering it tells me a lot about what you're processing here. Is that you were doing something, and you decided to do something else, and you went deep on that something else, and that's what kind of saved your bacon, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so now you're wondering, this feels like this similar situation where the, there's like this crazy economic meltdown too, right? <clears throat> and markets are panicked. And you're asking yourself now, should I change again? Because that's what worked in the past. You're not necessarily changing to specialize. You're just wondering if you should choose a different specialization, perhaps? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So we've refined the question a little bit, right? It's not necessarily that you want to go and be a generalist and try to be all things to all people with nothing to back it up. It's just you're saying to yourself, is there opportunity out there that's going to help me get through this and something that I've always wanted to do but didn't? And that's going to be a much deeper conversation. But I would not encourage you to go the generalist route, no matter what the economic situation is. If you think about this, money's going to get really tight. People are going to be very risk averse. And when they do hire people, are they more likely to hire someone who's only done it once or somebody who's done it a thousand times? It seems like they would go with somebody who has a lot of expertise because the last thing they want to do is in a time of economic uncertainty is to spend money and gamble it with somebody who's barely done it at all. Mm. So... You know, I know you're a part of the pro group, so we just need to sit back and talk about different business models and look for opportunities right now. We need to have our senses on full alert mode. We have to be super nimble right now. When opportunity opens and we can see it, we have to just say, you know what? Blueprint from yesterday, goodbye. I'm ready to do what is necessary and to be super yeah. alert, right? But and I also... And this is the thing and this is the thing, I am part of the pro group, so I'm privy to all these conversations that we've, you know, we've had and um, I've learned a hell of a lot. And I, and I think this is, it's just unpre uh, unprecedented times where the pressure gets to you. And, um, and I think you start questioning yourself. Sure. Um, okay. Let me, let me end on this, okay? So we're going to end it because uh, the, the boys are telling me we're kind of over time here. Okay, here's how we're going to end this thing. I think in times of chaos and pressure, the true character is revealed. I'm not just talking about like some narrative structure. I'm talking about you. Is It's easy to be courageous. It's easy to, bold, to be bold and decisive when there's no pressure. Everything you do seems pretty good. It's times like this that the true character is revealed that heroes can step on, uh, step up, 
and reveal themselves. And here you are. So I would not process this like, ah, oh, I'm starting to panic. There's so much that's going on. I'm, I'm scared. The pressure is really what's going to make you. Mm. And this is your time to be innovative, to be a leader, to kind of put your best thinking hat on and solve your way out of this problem. Now, we're going to face that financial pressure too because I imagine as much as people want to learn during this time, they're also concerned about their financial well-being. So I imagine that in a couple of weeks, uh, if not already, our course kits and donations and people joining our group is going to drop. So we're going to have to also re-examine what we're doing here and how we could better serve our community. So we're all asking ourselves this question, but I'm not going to serve my, my team, my staff, well, by panicking, by making irrational knee-jerk reactions uh, to ch chase the wind because nothing is there. I want to be contemplative. I want to have my resources ready and aligned so that when opportunity opens up, we move fast. You're going to see all kinds of different content coming from us, different platforms and different initiatives that we've been sitting on for quite some time. Wow, what a motivator a pandemic will do. So we're going we're gonna to take massive action. We're going to move forward. We're going to try lots of things like what's happening today. So people are tuning in. Maybe it's been a long time since you've seen an interactive format from us. It's because we haven't done it in a while. We haven't done these live conversations. So we're also learning in the process. Maybe Ricky and Jonah will have some notes, and I'll have some notes for them, what we can do better next time to get you guys involved in the conversation, okay? So... I think the thing is the steady hand needs to come forward right now, not the shaky hand, to steer the ship. Guide your ship. And if it's just a team of one or a team of 300, it doesn't matter. We're all looking for leadership right now and, and be the best leader you can be. Okay? All right. Thanks very much, Ash. I will see you uh, inside the group and on calls. But uh, for the rest of you guys... I'm going to sign off right now. I hope you guys enjoyed this format. And if so, what we'll do is we'll do more of them. And I know we didn't give you guys a lot of notice and it was improperly titled, uh, okay. but we'll fix that in a second. And hopefully you guys will be around for the next one. That's it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. 